Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Anna. I'm a writer and aspiring author. This is the channel where I get to talk about all of that. Today is going to be a goals video. It's coming at you a little bit later than it should have, than I really wanted it to. I'm shooting this on the 16th and hopefully it'll go up on the 20th. There are certain things that have happened in my life that have been quite sudden and quite drastic all at the same time. That's the reason for this great big gap in time. I'm the kind of person that doesn't really like to move forward with things unless they're set in stone and obviously life is not set in stone. So it, it definitely is this very difficult dynamic to mentally wrap my head around. However, things are a little bit more steady now and moving forward. I do have a couple of vlogs that are set up um, that will be coming out soon. I just have to edit them. Um, and they are mostly, the, the one that I'm thinking of right now is mostly just a in-between phase of like figuring out, I, I really was kind of talking myself into writing Project Vampire because making that step forward, it just feels like a monumental thing. I've been thinking about this story for such a long time that having it in the back of my head, it was like I couldn't start. And so I had to really build myself up and talk myself into it, even though all it would take is sitting down, opening my notebook and writing. I don't even have to wait for a computer to boot up, you know? So, um, so that vlog will be really a lot of me talking myself into getting the story done. I have officially started and it is going quite well. That's not what this video is about. A couple of housekeeping things before we get into it, however, is it just, if you want to stick around, make sure you're subscribed. That way you're updated every time I post a new video. I am pretty inconsistent with it at the moment. I do hope to gain a greater consistency over the next couple of months and actually be on a system and a schedule. But like I said, things kind of uh, threw a monkey wrench in my YouTube and writing plans that uh, I will get to. Don't worry. So if you want to stick around, make sure you're subscribed. I do also have that short story collection, I want to call it, beginning to be posted on my newsletter starting at the end of January. I don't have an official date, probably a Saturday of some sort. However, the main thing is that it's coming. A new short story will be posted every month, so probably the last Saturday of the month, every month. So there will be 12 total, maybe more but I will sort of be running an experiment with this and seeing if I enjoy it if I like it the story I love um, but the process and the methods that I plan on using they're a bit of an experiment before I go much further the story is about death and a guy who thinks about death just a little bit too often death and Travis open up a flower shop together if you want to read it as well you're welcome to head on over to my newsletter the link will be in the description below so to start off I feel like there needs to be a little, a couple disclaimers here. One is that I actually have a job. I was having fun content creating or content writing for other companies, but it just, after a while, it just got a little draining and I really wasn't enjoying it anymore. And so I decided to stop and I decided that I would just kind of throw out my resume to a couple of different companies around town. Um, not in a content writing capacity, just in what they needed for work. And the day and the day that I submitted my application to this one company, I pretty much got a job. I got a call that day, did an interview the next day, and was on the payroll within two weeks and have been working it for two weeks now, and it's been a blast. I really enjoy it. Before we really get into the goals of it all, is that I am still getting back into writing. I know that it kind of seems like I'm not, like I'm not, but I'm still getting back into it after um, when I when I got pregnant with my last, I couldn't write. I don't know what it was. I don't know if there was just so much going on on the outside of my brain that all my brain had the capacity to think about was the next day and the next move that I would make for my family. And so writing definitely went on the back burner and I needed to focus more heavily on my family so eventually i had the baby and i knew that writing is for those of you who do not know which there are probably a lot of you writing pretty much it sounds dramatic to say this but writing pretty much saved my life um there was a period where i was severely depressed and I started writing down the most self-deprecating things in my journal, the, the, the deepest, darkest thoughts that you could think of that a mother could have. I wrote them all down. And it took a lot of working through that 
and recognizing that those thoughts were not good and that those thoughts were the worst and that I was a bad person at that time and maybe not overall but at that time I was a bad person and the writing of the thing helped me get out of that and I think if I hadn't started bad things would have happened so when I say that writing saved my life I do not say that lightly and when I lost the ability or the mental capacity to even consider sitting down and typing something out. It was hard. It was really hard. I had to let it go for a time, but I knew that it's not something that I wanted to let go for a long time. Like, it was hard not writing. So when I had the baby, it was great. I made my comeback video and all that, and I started writing again. It was hard. It sucked. And right now, I'm a year and a half into really getting back into it and I finally feel like I'm sort of starting to hit my stride and I'm finally starting to feel more like a storyteller than I had been. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of really hard work to figure out how to make it work for me again and to figure out how to get the writing to be a thing for me again. Trying to fit it in around around family and around life was not easy. I will link a couple of videos in the description and up in the cards to sort of give you a better understanding of the process. And if you want to go back and watch even more, there's a lot of videos that actually document all of this going forward. I use this, I use YouTube as a big journal for me. That's really what it is. It doesn't benefit my family in any way. It doesn't benefit me financially. It, it really is just a documentation of the process and of what it took to get from where I was to where I am. And where I was, was in a very uh, rough spot. Um, not, not in the last couple of years, I've actually been doing great. Thank you very much for asking. But in the last couple of years, it starting off where I was, it was like pulling teeth. That's such an overused phrase, but like it really is. It's just this hard thing to do. And you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're braced for it and you know you gotta do it to move forward, but it is still so hard. Like you're just hesitating the whole time because what if I'm not good enough? What if I have lost all of my spark? What if I have lived my moment and now it's gonna be all gone for the rest of forever? So I went through all of these emotions, all of these, I'm never gonna be as good as I was before. What's the point of in even trying? And now that I'm like through the worst of it, I think, through the hardest part of figuring this all out again, I am happy to say that I am so much better than I used to be. That is, you know, because I did not stop, because I didn't want to stop and because I wanted to keep trying and going and I have goals for my writing overall and goal goals for my life that pertain to the writing. It certainly took a very long time to get here. I'm, I'm so glad that I can look back and say no, I was I was as good as I was then and I'm as good as I am now but this is not the best I'm ever going to be. Now that we've had that sort of pep talk let's get into the actual goals. Um, now over, over the last couple of years I realized that goal setting in the way that is traditionally done on AuthorTube and in life in general this this numbers metric doesn't work for me. It's taken five to six years of sitting down and making goals the wrong way for me to realize what the right way is. So reading 56 books is not the right goal for me. Setting parameters for my goal is. Let's, I guess let's just get reading out of the way. Instead of reading however many books, the goal is not to read X number of books. The goal is to bring a greater depth of reading into my life. So fiction is great. Fiction is where we learn about things without doing the thing, you know. We learn important lessons vicariously through other people that our brains actually do internalize and it's like we're living that lesson and our bodies recognize these, this, um, those events as their own, allowing us to experience it without the danger of actually experiencing it. And so fiction is great for that. Fiction is actually wonderful, but nonfiction is great for figuring out how to do things before we go through the thing. So like 
So for writing craft, you know, reading these books that, um, you know, John Truby's The Anatomy of Story, Bird by Bird, Wired for Story, and Story Genius, all of these books are excellent to figure out how to do the thing and then learn to implement the, the aspect of storytelling that you're trying to do. So in terms of reading, my goal is not a spe specific number, it is a specific type of learning. So for me, it will be learning how to craft a better story um, and that'll actually tie into my writing goal as well. It'll be to learn how to craft a better story. I want to learn more about anthropology and archeology span specifically. Um, it's always been something I'm interested in and given my last, you know, watching the mummy, the vampire story is sort of based off loosely, not entirely. So it's, it's, you know, it is inspired by, there we go. I've always been interested in archeology span and so bringing more of that into my reading, bringing more gardening into my reading. I am not a great gardener. Um, I have several failed garden attempts and, you know, probably from the time I was married to now, I have tried to do a garden every single year and it's just not worked. And I know that I'm capable of it, but there are many lessons that I need to learn before I can really garden to any degree of success. And so bringing in those gardening books to learn how to do the thing before actually doing the thing so that I can mitigate any um, false aspects of the, the process before it happens so I know what to do when this thing happens. Those are all reading goals that I would like to actually have completed by the end of the year is to learn more about these given subjects. I want to read more fiction and I will definitely be reading more than is probably healthy for me, but I do want to bring in these other subjects to grow more as a person rather than just as a reader. I don't have a definable number for them because I don't want to have a definable number for them. I might track the amount that I do read, um, but that is not necessarily for, like, I don't see how that would benefit me as a person other than to say, hey, I read this many books this year. Um, but that's always been a discouraging thing to me. When I set a goal and I don't reach that goal, it just, it it puts me into a spiral and it's not fun. All right, moving on to YouTube. I, YouTube is a hobby. It is straight up, there is no real goal. And there used to be in the beginning when I had ideas of grandeur of, making this great big YouTube channel where people would come for advice and to watch my silly antics. And, you know, someday that might be a fun goal to, to set when I'm more realistically doing the things that I need to do in order to make that an actual goal. However, YouTube is just a hobby for me. It's something that I enjoy doing. It's not something that's bringing any benefit to my family. It's not a financial input. There are there are definitely ways it's benefiting me. I've met a lot of great people doing YouTube. I've met several critique partners that I um, that I really enjoy working with doing YouTube. I have learned how to craft a better story, surprisingly. Speaking of critique partners though, Meredith Phillips, she actually just did a really, really big sort of collaboration with other author tubers for critique partners. And if you want to know more about that, and if you are right now looking for a critique partner or eventually someday want a critique partner, I will link her video below so that you can go watch it, but it is an excellent opportunity to find somebody that would work well with you. Um, that that you would want to share your story with to get feedback on. Soft goal is to have like 24 videos like I did last year, but that's not necessarily the goal that I'd like to maintain as what I'd like to see improvement on over the next year. And goals to me are all about improvement. If I'm not actually seeing the improvement in my life, then I don't see a point in actually stating that as a goal, you know? In chronicling my writing, and my writing process and the stories that I have, I want it to at least be something entertaining and something that I can look back on and get something from. So I have looked back on um, the murder mystery that I wrote that I started several years ago in trying to actually write it and get the story published 
Like that was my big, I was gonna self publish that. And now I, in, in order to get to the point that I'm at right now, I had to go back and I had to look at those videos and I had to see what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. I can still use YouTube as a way to understand more about my process and what works for me and what doesn't. And going back, especially when I was still figuring out um, my postpartum writing everything, I would go back to look at how I did it before as a jumping off point to how I would like to do it moving forward. So YouTube, again, soft goal is 24 videos, maybe some shorts, maybe some community posts, but hard goal is to learn how to craft a better video, is to get better at my editing skills, is to get better at my scripting skills, because I think that if I were to script them better, that they would actually be better videos all around, you know? Um, I Like I said, I've tried to shoot this video like four times. I accidentally deleted the first video I shot for it, which was fortunate because I ended up getting a job and things ended up flip-flopping around in my life. So that video no longer, it wasn't correct anymore. Maybe if I had scripted them better, because I, I had scripted them, believe me, then the actual video would have come out the first time because I think at this point I've spent two to three hours on this video and the content isn't even going to go up. So like, what was the point? So if I were to script them in a way that works with my brain and works with my, you know, personality, I might be able to streamline the process and make it go faster, make the editing easier and better and help me actually learn how to edit a video in a way that's going to be a little bit more entertaining. I could do different shots in different places and basically plan out the video all around. So ultimately, I think at this point in the stage, I figured out the documentation part of the process and that's really nice. I've gotten comfortable in front of a camera again and it's not as hard for me to sit down and shoot a video as it once was, you know, in the last year and a half. Moving on to writing, and this is possibly what I am most excited about, and it is possibly where I think I was held back most of the time. Like I said, over the last year, year and a half or so, it has been me trying to re-figure out how I how I write, how I tell a story, and it's been definitely a major struggle, but there's a lot that I have learned over the last year, such as how to sit down and write. I've learned a lot about plot going back and reading through. I've, I've read a couple of different craft stories this last year that I think have really helped me nail down um, the, the process of creating a story before you write it down. This last year with Project Vampire, I wrote a synopsis for the first time, and that is huge because for the longest time, my fear was that I have to write it like so fast, I have to write through the story so fast that I'm afraid I'm going to forget key parts of the story. And that is terrifying to me, like something that seems so cool to me, how am I gonna remember all of that before I get to that actual part of the story? And I did a sort of synopsis with Project Reese, I'll link that, um, it was like two years ago now, maybe a little bit longer, but I did that with Project Reese and it didn't work out. And there was something fundamentally wrong with that and I thought that, that doing a synopsis wouldn't work. However, now that I have gone through the process of figuring out storytelling and the uh, figuring out how to make a character work with the plot, work with the setting and everything, figuring out how to do that in this synopsis that I wrote, I have found that, it is, that it's actually really helping me to stay on track with the story as well as if I think of something that I think would be really cool, I'll put it in the synopsis where it should go and when I actually get to that point, it won't be forgotten. It'll just be there and I can think about it again. Um, and so that has been the last um, year or so of me figuring out how to do this thing again. And moving forward, I don't want to, again, put a number on anything. Um, like, again, soft goal is to have something queryable by the end of the year. But hard goal is to learn how to finish a story. And I've been doing that a lot with the short stories that I've been writing. Like, I think short stories are so valuable in that they can help you to get from one end 
of the storytelling process to the other and they can help you finish a story and teach you how to tell a cohesive one without the months and months and months that it usually takes to tell a novel length story. I want to be able to tell a story from beginning to end in a longer format. So I've been, I feel like it's kind of been a gradual buildup of um, short stories to mid-length stories to actual novels to, or actual novellas to novels. I've kind of been building it up a little bit by little bit, like little bit by little bit in, and learning how to tell a story from start to finish and actually go through the process of editing and revising and um, proofreading and having critiques and all of that. I think it's really helping um, basically learn how to work through the process. So I do have my my desires by the end of the year. I would love to have a book queryable. I would like to have two first drafts. I will be re revisiting Project DW this year. Um, and that makes me really happy because I've realized what I did wrong and I realized what I need to do to make it right. And so as soon as I'm done drafting and revising slash transcribing the story into a Word document for Project Vampire, I will be um, slowly working through the process of writing a synopsis for Project EW, which will help. It, it was a multiple timeline sort of story, which I think is really complicated for a still mostly newbie writer to do. And the story has my heart and I'd like to finish it someday. And that someday will hopefully be a lot sooner than you know, 50 years from now. A first draft of Project Vampire, a first draft of, a first official first draft of Project EW, and then one of them to the querying phase by the end of the year. That would be, that would be delightful. But the overall, the, the like definable goal that I would really like to have set by the end of the year is that I have learned to tell a story from beginning to end with all of the revising in between in a way that is entertaining, in a way that is thought-provoking and provides a lesson that the reader actually gets out of the story. I think those are the most powerful stories that we have. I would love to be at the point where I can just start up a story and be able to tell the story all the way through. And I think I've got a pretty solid foundation for it. And all I have to do is do the thing at this point. Because if I don't do the thing that I'm never gonna learn any more than I already know. and. That would just be sad, you know, because my entire goal is growth. I think that's really like my word for the year, whatever, growth and intention and working through things in a way that's actually going to teach me. So those are my goals for this year. I'm really excited about the things that are coming forward. Let me know your goals in the comments if you are a big goal setter or a soft goal setter like me. I think that there is value in knowing what you want and knowing what works for you. And if none of this works for you, then I hope that you find a way to grow in a way that works for you. Uh, because I think that that's why we're here in the end, is to just grow as people, is to learn how to be human. I think storytelling is a fantastic way to do that. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys so, so much for being the people that listen to me blather on about my stories and about my goals and about my dreams and desires and all those things. It astounds me that there are so many of you that sit here and listen to me and it's it's nice. It's nice to have an ear. And thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you all in my next video and until next time, keep riding forward.